Hello everyone. This is Sister Jane Rose Joy. I'm back again. Today I'm back with a little bit different topic. <laughs> and uh, I would like I would like today to share a very personal experience. It's very personal. It's been a very hard situation, but I would like just to share it, especially for uh, sisters that will come across this uh, uh, experience, uh, personal situation that I would love to share with you all. I believe 100% uh, you're going to learn one thing or two. And the topic today is about the bullies we meet in our everyday life. I believe that um, one way or another, certain experiences change our lives. And they change our lives for the better. Obviously, I'm not promoting my healthy business <laughs> products today. And I want to reach out to you, my sisters, who will come across this short YouTube and I would like an openness as I share my experience and all three I believe you learn from them and how they have been able how I have been able to overcome these challenges in the issues I'm I'm of course just about to share. My YouTube channel of course is young as you know and I am still trusting God that uh, anyone who comes across what I post will learn a thing or two. So if you like my video, I would kindly request you to make sure you subscribe and follow me. I'll also follow you back. I will also follow you back and I promise everything I do in my life, I do it not to promote hate, I love everyone that God sends my way. And what I'm about to share here are very painful experiences that I've been going through at one place of work. And any sisters going through similar situations can learn from me. Uh, I am a health professional worker <laughs> by profession. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not the best thing to share, but I believe I'm impacting lives. I'm changing lives. I love people. I love uh, taking good care of uh, the people that God sends my way at my place of work. And I am very, very passionate in doing what I do because it even helps me to become a better person. Let me just share something little. I did take care of my mom. My mom passed away in 2012. And I remember when my mom was sick. That was the most beautiful, beautiful thing that, of course, I did many beautiful things even when my mom was healthy. But that particular moment when my mom was so uh, vulnerable and in a difficult situation. I remember by then I used to live in a country in Southeast Asia, Cambodia. If you've heard of Cambodia, it's a small country. I used to work there. I volunteered, actually. I volunteered there um, uh, for two years. And later on, I later got a very good job. I also continued working there. And uh, every time I would get an opportunity to travel to see my mom i would make sure i would do it and uh, especially the last years of her life i would want to tell you the truth i did take good care of my mom i loved her so much and when i lost my mom for me it was one of the most painful experiences but in essence what i was sharing is that i loved you know taking care of her especially those times those days that she wouldn't be able to do much for herself and i am grateful to god that i did it first of all because she was my mother and i loved her so um let me go back to my topic uh it's been a period of two years um 
that I've been going through these experiences and that is why I've taken a bold step to come forward and share without name calling or anything just to share my personal experiences and how God has helped me to overcome all these challenges. I've really been dealing with bullies at my place of work. For truth, this is a reality and sexual harassment bullies too uh, in one of these places of work. And one of the bullies wrote a few text messages to me and one of obviously was a very disturbing text message that I ever even would have imagined that I would you know, I would get from a colleague, someone that I used, you know, someone that I used to work with, someone who was not afraid, just a colleague. And the fact that I was a supervisor when this happened to me really, really broke my heart. And uh, the text message was obviously like a very nonsensical and very bad joke that made me feel so bad and very terrible about, you know, uh, the intention of this particular individual. And uh, I, as I opened the text message, I, was, I wasn't even like, actually it, it was a WhatsApp text message. I wasn't even like <laughs> thinking uh, uh, of what this text message was all about. And when I scrolled, the first words that I, I saw were 10 ways of enjoy uh, 10 ways to enjoy sex and of course there was a joke that um was below this um uh, whatsapp text message and i knew you would open this but wash 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 your hands of course something like that to do with a reminder of you know head washing due to covid19 pandemic i was very upset and I confronted this person in a nice way and eventually this person apologized. I even reported this to my immediate supervisor who expressed that he himself wouldn't be involved in that but uh, I try and solve my own problem. I just kept quiet. I thought that was the end of it that this person got it straight from me that uh, such, such certain jokes and were and uncalled for. And if like you just colleagues with someone and this person doesn't share such jokes via text messages, I thought it was a clear message that I wasn't interested in this kind of messages. This is just one. There were others, but uh, at this particular point, I don't want to go through all these issues. I'm just giving this as an example. And... Um, as a matter of fact, the harassment continued, the bullying continued, and with jokes openly addressed to me, this particular individual would even comment that, um, why wouldn't I take some day offs with him and you know go to a hotel and spend nights with him? And um, one of those staff eventually was about to retire and he continued making those particular jokes. They were two male staff. And um, um, I want to say that, take note as I share this, these male staff, apart from the fact we were working in the same place of work, these are not people that I honestly used to joke with or even say certain things because I'm a very respectful person and uh, I wouldn't like really, you know, joke, you know, with my fellow colleagues, knowing first of all that these two uh, male staff were married men, I they had no place in my life as far as anything else apart from work was concerned. Every time I raised these concerns with my supervisor, my immediate supervisor, I think my supervisor was not kind of like really taking it like these were issues that were disturbing me and I wasn't feeling comfortable being a female uh, staff and being in such a, a particular situation. 
And um, one of them continued doing this. He would comment about my buttocks, my fingernails porridge. And as a matter of fact, I was just so tired of it. Every day I would go to work. I was like, oh God, I don't know today what uh, will be the comment that I will receive from this particular staff, male staff. It was kind of like a situation that had started creating fear in me. And I, I was feeling very, very terribly uncomfortable. Um, going through these situations every single day, it continued bothering me. And those are just just few examples. Um, I knew that uh, I needed to do something about it. I felt like my supervisor was not helping me enough. I was so, so tired. And eventually, I decided to raise my issues with the human resources manager, believing that I would get the help. Of course, the help that I needed or, you know, a way forward on how, how, how or what I was supposed to do. Because I was just feeling that I, I am just becoming a victim of these issues. And I also started getting concerned when other issues unrelated to what was going on, these male staff would go to, the, uh, to, the, to my immediate supervisor and they would tell him of some stuff. And when my manage, program manager would come back to me and tell me those stuff, I would like, why, why are all these stories being said to you? Because the issues here that I've been sharing with you, it's to do with the kind of harassment that I'm getting from this male staff. But when they come to you, they are bringing other issues related to my, me being their you know, supervisor and uh, me telling them on some certain things that they were supposed to do on a day-to-day -day shift. And this had nothing to do with work at all. I was not like rude. They cannot say that I was rude in my way of saying stuff. I was just, you know, delegating tasks in a normal, you know, way, uh, I mean, normal environment of work. And as far as what was I was supposed to tell them to do, nothing more beyond that. The male staff I later came to know was also setting, one of them was also setting some pornographic uh, creeps to other staff in the same at the same place of work. And uh, one female staff eventually confided with me and uh, she shared with me that uh, she was very upset that she res uh, re received such a, a pornographic creep from one of the male staff and uh, she was very upset and uh, she confronted him. I raised these issues to the HR and these other female staff uh, issues that were confided to me in the sense that I was this, their supervisor. And I thought that by doing this, this would like help us come with a way of really knowing how to help this male staff. This male staff would even spend lots of hours and hours watching pornography or those f pornographic creeps uh, during a normal working shift. And this has, had also been brought to my attention by other staff, although they were afraid of like really directly confronting him. And by me coming forward and sharing this, it was because the issue was getting out of heart. It had nothing to do with any personal issues. Uh, every, every, everyone uh, at this place of work had started getting very, uh, very affected. And uh, in a way, they were not comfortable at all. Let me say, they were not comfortable at all, at all with what was going on. And they wanted to know which was the best way, you know, like to really figure out how to address these particular issues with this one male staff. Um, another thing is that uh, openly these two male staff wanted me to have sex with them. And of course I said, no, you're both married men and I'm not interested with any of you. I'm not interested with any of your relationships and please get out of my life as far as what you are asking me is concerned. And 
praise knock it knock it off i am not uh, a, a lady who is interested with these things i am here for work if you want to discuss things pertaining what you're supposed to do here, please go ahead. Let's make this place a better place where we can serve uh, the people entrusted to us in a better way. But anything that other than that, please, I'm not interested. So I refused. In other words, I refused. And I was firm in it. And I said no. And uh, of course, as I earlier on said, I reported all these issues to the HR an, a, a, an investigation was done but i would call it actually it was not an investigation it was just a sham investigation because it, it didn't go anywhere one of these um male staff was uh, uh asked to go home as the investigation was going on and he went home for two weeks and after that the last day of the two weeks i got from another supervisor not the hr department itself but another supervisor that um, the investigation had come into conclusion and uh, uh, all the things that I had mentioned were unfounded uh, they were not true and that uh, everything uh, the case was closed I am not supposed to retaliate either to this uh, one female staff who had confided with me that uh, some pornographic creeps were being sent to her or had been sent to her and uh, not to reiterate to any of them. I was just like, seriously? Everything I said was a lie. I just resent to everything that was said to me. And I you know, said, okay, I understand. I understand what you have said to me and I'll keep to it. Another thing I realized, um, the same person who reported uh, about the, the, the findings of this investigation also offered me to go and work in another place. Literally, um, they were offering me to leave that particular place of work, to go and work somewhere else. And I asked her, why are you like coming up with that immediate solution that I should be the one, you know, going to work in another place of work. You know, uh, being a supervisor, I loved what I was doing. And if you offer me an opportunity, even as I offered voluntarily to step down because of, of, of the pain I was feeling right then in my heart, knowing that this person who has been doing all these things would come to work back with me and, uh, knowing that sincerely they did nothing about the issues I raised, which of course were not a lie. All the staff in that um, place of work knew, starting from my immediate supervisor, knew what I was going through, knew all the lies that this male staff would come and share with him, and he would find that honestly nothing of the sort was going on. Anyway, I say no, right now, I am not ready to go and start working somewhere else. I'm already used to this place of work. And no matter what the challenge is, if this is truly what you feel is the right thing you have done and that you feel like I am the one who has been, you know, telling lies, it's okay. I accept that. But in my heart, I know it's not the case. But I am not willing to go and work anywhere else. And, uh, if this is the way you feel like you want to retaliate to me, it's not justified. And for that reason, I'm even saying no. I'm not going to go to work anywhere else because honestly, there was nothing wrong that I have done. I only raised issues that I should raise, thinking that raising these issues with you as the management and my supervisors uh, would, you know, you would come up with solutions. You're adding more uh, issues towards me and you're victimizing me the more and this is even the reason why i'm telling you no i'm not gonna go and work anywhere else so anyway it was this at this point of course as i said earlier on that i decided you know to step down and uh uh, uh, from my, you know, of course, my supervisory role, but we, of course, wish to continue working in the same place for a different role. And uh, 
uh, the management honored that and they continue, told me, okay, continue working. But remember, we are reminding you, you're not supposed to retaliate to any of the staff in this particular place of work. I said, okay, that was very clear to me. I know my start. I know what I've gone through. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Justice delayed is not, you know, it's not justice denied. I know. I know for sure you know the truth. But I, I, won't, I don't want to go through it. You have not showed me what kind of investigation you did. You, all you're doing is just, you have not showed me no nothing. I have even sent all the text messages that were sent to me uh, via my WhatsApp message. But you have not given me a report of the outcome. The only report you are giving me is your word. Nothing more. You have not sent to me like a formal paperwork showing me ABCD is what we investigated and ABCD is the conclusion. You're just telling me the case was closed. So uh, at this point I said I'm not trying to be difficult or to argue but I will continue doing what I've been doing of course in a different role and uh, that's okay with me for now. So um I was very clear and straightforward about the failures of the management. And even if I was victimized, I still, up to this day, know I spoke the truth. And this is why I'm coming forward. And I would like as many sisters to listen to my story and know that these things are still happening. Uh, the male staff came back to work more empowered to harass me and up to date, this is what has been going on. This same male staff uh, was uh, uh, requested to continue uh, working because the other male staff who was his best friend retired and uh, there was uh, an open shift and he, uh, the management said he would picking up those hours because uh, it stood out that uh, in this particular shift, I was the only staff. And uh, the nature of the work we do, uh, it needed um, someone to be replaced uh, in the position of this one male staff who retired so that uh, the work would be done, you know, in a more equivalent way and uh, serving the, the people uh, that are in this particular place of work in the best way. So um, eventually this... Um, person, a uh, male staff who used to harass me came back, uh, would pick shifts as he wanted. If he felt he wouldn't come to work, he wouldn't come to work. If he felt he would come to work, he would come to work, sleep most of the time, do minimal work, harass me, do whatever he wanted to do because he was, of course, he felt he was empowered to do whatever he was doing and he was doing it in a very comfortable way. I tell you, very comfortable way. Yes, cook a lot of food, <laughs> eat and sleep and not take care of the people that he was assigned to take care of. Anyway, um, I just continued doing the best, doing what I, how I would do. I did my part and um, the situation didn't change. Uh, eventually, um, other allegations would be sent. She said... A, B, C, D. Of course, these were just lies. These were just cooked lies. I wasn't even talking to this male staff. I wasn't even concerned because uh, the more uh, I would keep off from him, the better, but to make sure that I did my work. So um, the intimidation continued, the harassment continued, but according to the management, it was me who was the bad person. It was me who was not doing what I was supposed to do. It was even reported that I never used to do any work, which is, of course, a lie. When I asked my immediate supervisor why all those allegations are being said against me and what he himself said to the other uh, supervisors who are above him, whether it's true that I don't do any work. And he said, well, I told the management that you are very hardworking and you do the work. So um, that's, that's the truth. You, you do your work. And I said, okay, that's okay. But um, 
I am still feeling very uncomfortable because these situations, this narrative continues that I don't do A, B, C, D, but you know very well where the problem is. Why is it that you as uh, my immediate supervisor, you are not able to um, address these issues and address them once and for all? You just want to please one side more and you want me to be more victimized. This doesn't help the situation. You must make bold steps and do the right thing. And of course, uh, my immediate supervisor would say, yes, yes, but of course, definitely, you know, the male culture, they will not address issues pertaining to their other very few, very few. Let me say not all. I know in the, I've worked in other places of work. I know there are male staff who would be willing to start up you know, to their other male staff. But most of male staff will never start up because they know themselves. They know to their weaknesses. So I'm still there. I believe uh, I will get my justice no matter how long this will take me. Um, I have no intentions of uh, doing anything or retaliating to anybody. Um, that's not my heart. I have a good heart. And I know who I am in the kingdom of God. I know who, uh, who I am. I know what I was created for. And I don't think there would be uh, many bold ladies like me to go through this kind of stuff and still st step up and start firm and tell the bullies, looking straight into their eyes, what you're doing is wrong. And uh, you're not going to continue intimidating me and I'll continue doing what uh, I am supposed to do. Number one, I decided to forgive this booty, booties, even if the other one retired. I completely decided to forgive them. And God knows my heart. It was not easy. It was not easy. Considering all the humiliation that I went through, the pain I went through, uh, the you know, the intimidation, the pain, the laughter from other colleagues so it became a war in the whole place of work uh, being um undermined being overworked that's that's the tool they used when i'm on shift with them they refuse to work and they make me do all the junky work but let me tell you i know there's a god in heaven there's a god who sees everything Human beings may not give you the justice you deserve. This is what I always encourage myself and tell myself. But God, the creator, he whom brought me on this world, in this world, knows that for sure I am a strong woman. And this is why I continue doing what I do, believing, believing one day, one day, God, God will show the justice that I deserve. Faith in God has kept me not worrying about these booties and the sexual hungry intimidating devils has helped me to move on not quitting i'll not give up i am telling you to you, my sisters whenever these booties are against you do not give up do not do not say i'm gonna quit working do not say i'm leaving my job do not say you're quitting quitting for what Allowing the devil to take over you, allowing the devil to be the master of your life, do not quit. I am very strong in this. I have done it. I have shown them, not with words, not with anger, but showing them that I know who I am and I know who I am in the kingdom of God. Uh, I would want to tell you that I am waiting. I am waiting to witness, to see what God going to do for me. God is about to change my life for the better. I'm not angry even if I'm raising my voice. I'm not angry because it's the conviction that is in my heart that I truly know that seriously and honestly what I've gone through, it's painful. I have been discriminated against just because I'm truthful. Just because I, I, I stepped and spoke the truth. Yes, I am strong. My motto is never to give up. Now, to my sisters who have gone through this kind of situations, I have one angry truth that I want to tell you. The world is not on your side. 
your immediate supervisors are not on your side. Your supervisors will never, never be on your side. Why no one will never st step up on your side, on your behalf, is because they are cowards. That's the bitter truth. They are cowards. They will never, never want to, to see one of the courageous ladies at the place of work saying no to their shit, saying no to the kind of things that they, they are unjustly doing to you. They will never, never be on your side. They, most of these booty men, are all the same. Truly before God, they are all the same. Most, I'm using the word most, not all, most of them. Mark my word, I did not say all men. Some men are very powerful and will never do such stuff to a sister. But the truth remains, majority of them are like that. That's what they are. That's who they are. It's all because of sin and bad choices and judgment. Sisters, live your lives to the fullest. Fight for your fellow sisters. I am a little bit sad. Even this sister who came to me telling me all the kind of the pornographic materials or my pornographic creeps that she was getting from one of these male staff, later on moved to the side of this booty, did not start up for her rights, did not start up to tell this person, brother, what you're doing is wrong. Stop doing it. Stop spreading these pornographic creeps to your fellow colleagues, to your fellow staff members. It's wrong. Why she do, did that? It's because she was a coward. Shame on her. She was a coward. And I am sharing this because I know if you as sisters stand up for your fellow sisters, the sisters will have a voice. The world will be a better place. The places of work will be a better place to live in and to work in. I'm sharing this because I have overcome. <laughs> I am strong in the name of Jesus. I have overcome. It wasn't easy. There are days that I left that place of work in tears. I would just go in my car with a lot of pain, with a lot of tears, with a lot of shame. Humanly speaking, these people who do this things to you at the place of work, if you allow them, they will make your life a hell. See, spending sleepless nights, not because you are bad, not because you deserve it, not because you are a criminal, but because they are cowards. Don't, do not, never allow these people to make you feel all those kind of things. And even if it will come to a place that you feel like that, please, please, sister, try to overcome. Listen to my testimony and learn from my, my, my situations. Learn from me. If you find this personal experience and testimony helpful, share it with the world. I, I am strong. I have become a better person. I will never give up. I will never give in to the demands of the devil. I will never compromise my salvation to please the angry urges of men wanting sex. I am not, and I was not created for that. I'm not saying that I have never done sinful things in my life, but my Christian life says who I am. I want to believe the true message of God. I want to continue believing that I am who I am and I am what he has called me to be. I will not give in. I will not be intimidated. I have said no to these folks and whatever I hear from one ear, it goes off through the other ear because I want to be 
the person, the woman, that person to bring impact and changes in lives as for who God created me to be. Um, I realized that, I have realized that I'm not of their class. That's why they have been doing these things to me. I did my research, I did my homework. All of these staff members have very low IQ, not even a college degree. I realized I'm the only one working there who has a degree. They are so jealous and I have come to realize that the world is so much against some of the immigrants who are in the USA. It's not because uh, it's not because the immigrants who are in the US, it's not all of them, but some are really evil. And why am I saying this? Because they hated me, one of them, one of their own. I must confess here, I have never been mistreated in my stay here in the USA by a Caucasian brother or a sister or any American citizens. My supervisors have bought the lives of these colleagues because they don't know them. It's only their hearsay. She said so and so. It's only the truth that we said this kept is free. No matter, no matter their hate, I will not give up. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Yes, joy, generous joy. I'm beautiful and wonderfully created. Uh, I have a God-driven purpose here on this planet Earth. I am now more motivated to reach to my highest dreams and goals. I have chosen to continue to work there and I want them to know I am not afraid of them. I am not. I will never say an angry word to them, but I know their hearts. I know their motives. I know what they are out. I know they, even the, the things they would do. I know they would even kill me if they would have a chance. I know they would do that. And this is why I'm boldly coming out and warning and letting all sisters know the world is angry. There are so many angry men out there. And as I said, I want them to see and witness what God is going to do in my life. I am a very compassionate individual. I do my work with all my heart. I am treated in this particular place of work very in very inhuman ways just because I'm truthful just because I love God, just because I have Jesus in my heart, and just because I tell them some of the things you do are wrong. You shouldn't do them. You shouldn't do some certain things you are doing. I know it's not my work. I know it's not, but let me tell you, this testimony, I'm coming for your company. I'll buy it. I'm going to purchase that business. I'm telling you, God has spoken to me. I'll take over because you have you were my supervisors and you you refused to do the right thing i'm coming for you not in a bad way i'm gonna own that place of work god has spoken that to me and i believe god god is not a liar and i'll make sure when i own that place of work i'll change it and I'm, 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 I'm asking whoever will watch my video, whether from Japan, whether from Italy, whether from any part of the world, I want to ask you to help me be strong, <clears throat> be strong and to come for these people. I'm not coming for them in a bad way. I want to buy that place of work. I want to buy that business. I may not have the money now to do that. But I know God will provide for me. Anyone who would like to partner with me in this business, I'm very talented. I'm very talented. I have what it takes to learn such a business. But I would love to have people willing to work, you know, for a better, for the better, for the better of lives, changing lives. Not people who just come there to get their, you know, to get their hours and just get their paycheck but not knowing what they are doing i have seen so many injustices i cannot speak everything here because i know some of these devils will be watching this video and and i and i don't i have not mentioned their names but i know 100 percent they know who i am and they're gonna watch this video they're gonna watch what i've said i've not i've not um said any names but i believe 100 percent they will know because they know what they've been doing is wrong. They know it. And I trust 
the God who created me, the one who brought me on this planet Earth, will make things possible for me. That's why today I change my tone. I'm not here promoting the usual business I do. I have another business that I, I operate. But today, I just wanted to reach out to many sisters, as many as, as I can. And let them know you have to start for yourselves. Do not be cowards. Do not allow these booties put you down. Do not allow them. Use the talents, the God-given talents that God has given you. Start up. Start up and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We have to make this world a better place to live in. No matter what kind of injustices that are there, we are the church. We are the church. We are the ones to bring this church to this generation. We are the God chosen, uh, chosen individuals who are going to bring this church to another level. Thank you so much. I am so blessed to share this experience. I'm not angry, but I'm 100% percent convinced i'm gonna reach to my goal and god will make all things possible for god makes a way where there is no way be encouraged and know that there are beautiful things that we can do for ourselves no matter what happens to you even if you will not have someone to start for you for me i already i always start for my sisters not only my sibling sisters, for my sisters, even if it's not sisters from the same mother, because my heart is full of compassion. I have a beautiful heart and I want to make sure before the return of Jesus Christ that I have achieved all my God-given dreams. Be blessed. Stay well and share my video with all your other sisters. Let's be strong in this and let us never be intimidated by these booties. We are more and together we can do more. We are the ones to bring the change in the world. We are the ones that God has called for this generation to do and to achieve better things, better than those things that were performed by the apostles in those many thousands of years ago. God is going to use us. Let's promote love. Let's promote love. Let's promote love. Even to your haters, promote love. Promote love. And God will give you all your heart's desires. Be blessed. And I, I, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.